we can feel and know that he is with us. Amen. Uh, it's good to be back this morning. I uh, we'll appreciate uh, the opportunity to go preach at uh, the homecoming in LaGrange last week, but it's good to be home. Uh, I know that uh, Bishop did a wonderful job. I was able to listen to his uh, message during the week. He did a wonderful, wonderful job, and I'm so thankful that we have uh, a man of God such as he uh, that you can trust and know uh, that he listens to the Lord. And uh, uh, I tell you, I, I received a bunch from uh, his message this past Sunday. If you have your Bibles, if you'll turn with me to Matthew. I'm sorry, Luke, chapter 5, Luke chapter 5, this past week we got to attend a conference in South Carolina and the Lord really blessed in that conference and I'm so thankful to being able to be a part of it during that conference, it's kind of a neat experience to be able to uh, get into some conversations with people with your same uh, calling, pastors with your same calling. You know, it's easy looking from the outside in at people who do their job. You ever thought to yourself, man, I'd like to have their job? Or, you know, it'd be nice to have their job and their kind of money and and all this stuff, you know, how easy life would be if you was to be in their shoes. Uh, sometimes we get that way. I can remember my first job when I accepted my first job. I thought, man, this is just going to be easy. You know, I'm a stock boy. What more can you do? And then I learned that those cases got pretty heavy over time. And I learned about stooping, bending, and stocking the shelves, ordering. You think it's a simple task, but there's more involved to it than what I really realized when I accepted the job. And I'm sure that you, too, have probably been in that state where you thought a job was actually easy until you've done it yourself. But the reality of it is, is that we don't know what other people are going through. People come in all the time with smiles on their face and on their faces and you really don't know what's going on inside. When I began to prepare for this and, and in my life, I, I realized just in that one conference how many men that was uh, pastors that had walked in with smiles on their faces and by the end of the conference, uh, they, uh, you could see that God had put a mandate in their heart and I'm so thankful to be able to uh, be a part of those and see those things happening. But the reality of it is is that we must understand in this last day and time, we all got jobs to do. And the jobs people look at, and some people say it's not that hard, and others say you know, it might be a difficult task, but the reality is, is that God has given us all a job, and that is to go out into this lost and dying world and reach those who don't know them, know him as a personal Savior. And as I began to think about this Sunday, and uh, the Lord really put this onto my heart, and the title of my message today is Preparing the Table. Preparing the Table. In Luke chapter 5, we begin to read uh, where uh, Jesus was coming in contact with Levi, and we see that. Levi, everybody knows, his, knows him as Matthew, and we see where uh, he calls him. And we're going to start there in verse 27. It says, Later, as Jesus left the town, he saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi got up and left everything and followed him. I don't know about you, but I can remember the first time that I felt the call to minister. I asked the Lord into my life, and I began to seek after God, and I began to um, really get close and develop my relationship with Him. And as I began to develop my relationship with Christ, 
there was a call that he had placed in my heart to uh, preach, and I can remember giving him every excuse that I could think of as to why, to why I shouldn't preach. Uh, one, I'm not a great speaker. Two, uh, I knew of the, how taxing it was being a preacher's kid. I knew the things that you would face and the situations and the requirements. Uh, I thought I knew them all, but until I actually got into it, I realized how much more in-depth they were. But I kind of had a, a front row view to what a preacher would be like or being a preacher would be like. So I really uh, just wasn't so anxious to sign up for the job. But I can remember his calling and his wooing. And the thing here that you see here in verse 20, 28, it says, So Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. And that was the requirement. You don't see that Jesus told him anything other than uh, follow me and be my disciple. And then at that moment, Levi, which is Matthew, got up and it says that he left everything. There's times in my life where uh, I have uh, put in the balance and weighed in the balance uh, the call versus the sacrifice. I've, you too probably have weighed that in your life at some point, uh, your job versus the sacrifice that you make or what's been placed upon you. There's been times in your life probably where you felt like uh, uh, the, the sacrifice was more than uh, what the job required, and so you probably found other employment that was a little bit easier. But this is a spiritual employment that's called by God that simply we cannot just say, you know what, I don't want to be that anymore because we are to answer the call and it's without repentance. In other words, when God calls us and God calls us to do His will and to call us uh, into the ministry, whatever it may be in our lives, when we answer uh, not to turn back from it, but it's something that's placed inside of us no matter how hard it gets, no matter how many times or how much we struggle, uh, it's still there. So Levi got up and left everything to follow him. And I like what verse 29 says here. It says, Later, Levi held a banquet in his home with Jesus as the guest of honor. Many of Levi's fellow tax collectors and other guests also ate with him. The first thing that you see that Matthew done was that he prepared a banquet and Jesus was the guest of honor. And I believe this is where we miss a lot of things in ministry. A lot of times in ministry, we think we have to have a, a certain type of uh, a, a certain type of a gimmick, or we have to have certain plans, or we have to have certain things that will be able to draw people. But the reality is, is that we're not called uh, to pacify people or make them excited about Christ. The reality is, is that we are called to prepare the table. In other words, we're called to set the atmosphere. We're called to get all the things together so that God will come and that God will uh, be able to help them in their time of need. You, when you set the table, you say, Lord, this is what you have called me to do. I will do my best in preparing the table, but the work is up to you. The change is up to him. How many knows that we should be the vessel that God uses to accomplish his work? We can't give people salvation. It has to come through God. We can't force people uh, on what to do and what to say and how to act. That comes through God. All we can do is prepare the table. And I like how Levi, he prepared and he held a banquet in his home as Jesus was the guest of honor. And one thing that he done was he gathered all the tax collectors, all of his friends. He gathered them into one place and Jesus was the one who began. Uh, was the guest of honor that allowed those who came to see Jesus and to see Jesus in action. I don't know about you today, but I believe we overcomplicate ministry a lot of times. A lot of times we have to say we got to have a, a certain type of a, a, a class or certain sessions or certain programs uh, that we have to take place, and those are well and good, and I'm not trying to knock any of those. But the reality is that we have let those programs dictate how God moves in our life. 
We think that a program, and we put a program as a substitution for the power and the anointing of God. But what I've realized uh, in my ministry is that we can't prepare on a program or we can't rely on a program. What we have to do is do what God has called us to do, prepare the table, and allow God to work in the midst of the preparation that we have for Him and what we do for Him. And today when we began to... Uh, uh, began to explore and look into the, uh, to the, uh, the, the reason why we're here and the reason why ministry is so important is because it's something that we cannot do within ourselves. Ministry, we don't have a trademark. We cannot distribute salvation like it's a, a, a business card. We can't tell everybody, you know what, you're a part of it, you're not. Or we, we simply prepare the table and allow God to do the rest of the work. Luke 5.30, it says, But the Pharisees and their teachers of relig religious law complained bitterly to Jesus' disciples. Why do you eat and drink with such scum? And Jesus answered them, Healthy people do not need a doctor. Sick people do. In verse 32, it says, I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners and need to repent. I want to say that again. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners and need to repent. See, there's a lot of people today who think that they're righteous. There's a lot of people that they think that they're closer to God than they really are. There's a lot of people who think that they've got everything figured out and that they like their life just the way it is and they think that they can just skirt by and make it into heaven just like they are. But then there are those who knows that without a doubt, without the grace of God in their life, without God helping them and God establishing them, they know without a doubt that they wouldn't make it. I'm telling you, I'm the one that knows. I'm the one that knows that without God I am nothing. I'm the one that knows that I too have had sin in my life and I had to ask God to forgive me. I don't think I'm righteous, but I know that I need God as my Savior and my Lord. Today, when we look at this, we must understand that we live in a society where they think that there's no wrong. They think that everything should be handed to them. They think that everything should be given to them. They're entitled. They feel as though that anything goes in this world. But one thing that we do know is that everyone that's in this world needs Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Today, when we think about it, when we think about righteousness, if we think that we're righteous, chances are we're over our head. Chances are... The Bible tells us our righteousness is as filthy rags. See, we don't have our righteousness. Our righteousness will not get us anywhere. But it's through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ who takes our filthy righteousness and gives us His. We have to know our place and understand that God is with us and that God is wanting to help us. But we have to be willing to understand that God knows more about us than we do ourselves. That God wants to help us and be there for us. And that we must have an open heart. We must have an open mind. And we must allow God to use us and to change us for His glory and for His good. Levi was minding his business, doing his job. And Jesus comes by and says, follow me and be mine disciples. You don't see that he said, wait just a minute, Lord, let me finish up my day's work. The Bible said he got up immediately and he followed him. He left it all to follow him. I believe you can look back in the time of your life when you asked the Lord into your life. I'm sure that you made him promise after promise how you're going to be better and how you're going to serve him with all your heart. And I believe that that was uh, uh, intentional. And I believe that it's all sincerity in those things. But sometimes we get caught in the trap of thinking that we're okay. 
we get caught in the trap of thinking that, you know what, we've been seized in long enough, we've been in this long enough that uh, 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 we're going to be okay, that God sees us. And we get in that mind frame, in that mindset that, you know what, if it doesn't come like it used to, then it's not God. Come on, somebody. We think to ourselves that if it's not done the way that I received it, then it's not of God. That's kind of what the Pharisees were doing too. They were saying, you know what? The law is the law of the land and it should be that way and you should follow us. But something was different. Jesus was different. And they didn't understand it, nor did they like it. Because Jesus made a difference everywhere he went. And then he goes to verse 36 and he begins with a parable. Then Jesus gave them this illustration. No one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and uses it to patch an old garment. For then the new garment would be ruined and the new patch wouldn't even match the old garment garment see the reality is is that oftentimes we always lean towards those things that that's the most comfortable for us amen we like comfort there's nothing wrong with being comfortable I tell you I don't like wearing tight jeans do you they're uncomfortable right or a jacket that's a little 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 tight on you it's not comfortable or wearing a jacket in summer. It's not comfortable at all, is it? But yet we expect our experience with God to stay the same throughout our life. I tell you, God works today just like he done, did back then. The Sunday that you got the best experience of your life with God, you can still have that experience today and even greater. But we get so used to doing it our own way, having it our own way. And he gives this illustration and he's telling them something new is coming. The Savior of the world is coming. Open your eyes. The old things and the old ways, how you used to address religion, is changing. There's something new. His name is Jesus. He says you can't take from a new garment and place it on an old garment. And I believe that's what a lot of people have done in their lives. They try to just patch their lives together. Living on blessings of many, many years ago. And they're living in the ashes of blessings. And they go and they can remember how God had touched them. But God is today yearning to touch them like they were touched back then. But yet they can't see it. Nor are they preparing their hearts to receive what God has for them. We come to a place as a church, as a general church, where Jesus says in Matthew 5, 15, 7 and 9, You hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you, for he wrote, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce, for they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. We live in a world that says, you know what? I'm going to worship with my lips. I'm going to come in the same, to come in one way and leave out the same way I came in. With an expectation of a good music and a good sermon and a good lunch. And say that was a good Sunday. Today we need to recognize. That God wants to do something new in us. God wants to do something great in us. God don't want us to stay in a place of complacency. He doesn't want us to stand and and just go through life on automatic thinking. That we just have to deal with things that the enemy brings our way. And that we just have to adjust our lives to accommodate the pain and the hurt. God wants to pour something into us that's new. That will bring us victorious and will bring us out of the bondage of everyday living. And let us realize the power of God that lives and reigns inside of each and every one of us. He brings another parable. 
And it says this way in verse 37, And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, for the new wine would burst the wineskins, spilling the wine and ruining the skin. New wine must be stored in new wineskins. But no one who drinks the old wine seems to want the new wine. The old is just fine, they say. Here you see the heart of Jesus in this parable. I believe today that he's sitting or he's standing at the corners of heaven. Waiting and wanting to pour out for us that new wine. But he realizes that we still have old wineskins. And he understands that as new wine is poured into old wineskins, that it begins to expand. And old wineskins have already expanded as far as they can go. And when you put new wine into old wineskins, they begin to crack and burst open. See, there's a lot of times that God wants to do things for us, but our unwillingness submit to him our unwillingness to say God have your way with me Lord let me get past tradition let me get past my preferences let me get past my idea of how you should move and Lord create in me a new heart a new mind a new wine screen so that you can pour the new wine into my soul see because God wants To bless us today. God wants to use us today for this hour. For this moment. And we have to be willing. We have to be willing. I can't do anything as a pastor other than prepare the table. We can't do anything other in worship than prepare a table. A table that should be inviting those to come and taste of God. And to see His goodness and mercy and partake of His love. And of the new wine of Him pouring out into the wineskin. So that we can receive all that God has for us today. He's new every morning. He tells us, He tells us time and time again that we have to understand that He is the one who wants to see us succeed. He is the one who wants us to be victorious. He is the one who wants to bless us and to make us and to complete us and to, for us to have success in our homes, in our families, to have a powerful relationship with Him so that He can use us for His glory. But the only way that happens is if we're willing to take out the old wineskin and put in the new. Don't dispatch the old garment, but trade it to God and give Him all of the things that prevents us from moving closer to Him and receive the newness of the garment and the newness of the wineskin and the new wine that he wants to pour into each and every one of us. Some of us, we get so busy with life. I'm reminded of Martha and Mary, how Martha knew that Jesus was coming into the house and she was preparing, getting ready for the supper. And Martha was doing all she could to prepare. She was getting the food ready, but yet Mary was at the feet of Jesus. See, a lot of times we have to understand that we prepare, but when Jesus enters the room, we let God be God. We let Jesus be Lord. What Mary understood, and there's some things that Mary understood that Martha didn't. Martha felt that everything had to be perfect for Jesus to come. Mary just desired for Him to come. Martha wanted to feed the flesh the world with worldly food. And Martha or Mary wanted to feed, be fed by the words of Jesus. Martha wanted the natural setting to be inviting and done with excellence. And Mary just wanted to be in His presence. Martha approached Jesus wanting her sister to be judged on her works. But, but Mary... Wanted to be changed by being in the presence of her king. Today, all we can do, all I can do is prepare the table. All I can do 
is do what does saith the Lord in my life as your pastor to do what God has placed in my heart to do. But it's up to each and every one of us. Are we willing to partake of the table that has been prepared for you? If you need joy today, the table has been prepared. If you need peace today, the table has been prepared. If you need hope today, the table has been prepared. If you're struggling, God has you. Psalms 23 and 5 says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And you anoint my head with oil. And my cup runneth over. Today, you can receive from the table of God. But the choice is simply you and for you to decide. Am I willing to partake of what God has prepared for me? As I struggled with this message, as I prayed over this message, I could imagine in my heart a table that is spread before us. All of our concerns, all of the situations that we are dealing with, the answer is on the table. And we have a decision, each and every one of us has a decision to make. Are we going to come and receive? Are we going to give God our all? Are we going to submit to Him everything that hinders us from drawing closer to Him? And you might say to me this morning, Pastor, I read the Word. I pray, I study. I'm here to tell you that there are Bible scholars who walk away from God every day. They read the Word, but don't apply it to their lives. You can read the Word all day long and not apply it, and still die and go to hell. There is a table that has been prepared for each and every one of us today. Don't go away hungry. Don't go away defeated. Don't go away in the old wineskin that you came in with or the old garment that you have. Surrender it to Jesus and allow Him to pour the new wine into your vessel so that you can live a life that is pure, that is pure a life that is full of joy, hope, peace and that is powerful in the kingdom of God today we must understand that no matter what job you deal with on a daily basis no matter what you deal with in this life God has already prepared a table from you to eat from that would allow you to overcome anything the devil has against you and that anything that he might try to do how do I know because he has told us plain in his word that no weapon formed against us will prosper only way we allow them to prosper is if we're unwilling to change if we're unwilling to exchange the old wineskin for the new and allow him to pour into us power, his love, his mercy to expand our borders to help us in our lives. Let us stand this morning. Preparing the table. There's an old song that I love and I love to hear it. Come and dine. The master's call. Come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. It's prepared for you today to receive from him. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you today and we just thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for your anointing. God, we thank you. 
how your word comes alive in us and through us. Lord, we pray today, Lord, that we will change, exchange our old wineskins from you. God, that we'll let go of the past and we'll let go of all of the traditions. And we'll hold on to you. And we'll grab on to you. God, that you're beginning to pour new wine into us. God, that we will be wise enough to change our wineskins. Lord, that we will begin to receive your fullness of your glory and your ways. That we can latch on, God, to what thus saith the Lord. And not depend on anybody else to hear from you. But we can hear from you for ourselves today, O oh God. The table has been prepared. Our hearts have been prepared to receive from you today, God. We ask, Lord, that you will help us and that we will eat from your table and receive your blessings, and receive your anointing once again into our lives, that we can be used by you. God, we thank, thank you for all that you are and who you are. Your love and your mercy towards us. We give you thanks, honor, and praise. For it's in your name we pray.